Welcome everyone to um, this IP block of your summer school. Um, my name is Vashkan Figueroa. I come from Slovenian Intellectual Property Office. Uh, I'm there at the head of uh, training, consulting and uh, business development. With me is uh, Dr. Irena Hrelioc. Uh, and we will present some topics regarding the intellectual property. Um, the title of my, um, my presentation is Competitive Advantage and in Intellectual Property. Uh, so let's, the idea or the, the title of the summer school is from idea to innovation. Yeah, great. But do you think is this enough or should you go an extra mile and <laughs> I hope so, yeah. <coughs> Even though we are part now of the academic environment, um, incubators already think about money as well, or at least they should. <coughs> so, yeah. <coughs> the meaning of this um, presentation is definitely to go from idea to, to money. Agenda for today. First, the short overview of the topic the business side of the equation, business models, business strategy, competitive advantage. Then I will introduce you to intellectual property, intellectual property rights in the system itself. And um, then we'll try to put these two things together, so competitive advantages and intellectual property. At the end, <coughs> some, idea on, um, some ideas on idea development and exit strategies for small business and startups. And at the end, uh, a few words about the holistic approach to intellectual property through the IP value chain. So goals, introduce you to different types of intellectual property, discuss the possibilities of using the system uh, to gain and retain your competitive advantages, and to show you the need for IP strategy from the very beginning of, of, of a new company. Um, anyone here? having already his own or her own business? Or are your students, some entrepreneurs, startups? Students, students. students mostly. Okay. Just, oops, all wrong. Just a short disclaimer. Uh, the topic is very complex. I tried to uh, make it as easy as possible, omitting some details. So this is really the general, speaking in general terms for any uh, more um, concrete circumstances or own situation, please consult or look for professional advice. Okay, to start with, do you maybe know this guy? Mario Moretti Polegato. Any idea? Jokes. Okay. So, if you don't have your own idea, which you would like to develop, you can use this example. I'm sure you are pretty much all know at least the GFs uh, brand. Try to think through the presentation about this, uh, this, um, this story or. Okay, so the business side of the equation. Is there a buyer out there? When starting an idea, you should probably think about who will be your customer. So, um, to think about this, you should ask yourself which problem are you helping to solve for your customer? Which needs are you satisfying? And what value do you deliver to the customer? Okay, so basically these are the three questions every entrepreneur, every startup should have clearly answered before starting the business. Um, who are your customers? How well do you know your customers? How do you communicate with and reach your customers? 
and what is basically the customer relationship, the customer relationship management uh, that your business model uh, has. Okay. So this is the value side. Here you can think about communicating to customers and intellectual property, problem solving and intellectual property and so on. Okay. How costly it is to serve your customers. So the value you are bringing, how much does it cost you to bring this value to your customer? So which resources are required to deliver your value proposition? This is the, pro the, the, the product or service that you deliver. Which activities are required to deliver your value proposition? And who are your key partners and suppliers? And again, later, we will see this, these are very important um, part of the equation when putting together um, intellectual property and uh, business, business strategy, or competitive advantages. Okay. So putting this two into a business model, it should be coherent. And uh, we'll see later how to use some um, competitive advantages arriving from this, uh, this um, business model and how to, um, how to uh, make them as sustainable as possible. Okay. The value side of your business model and the cost side. This is something that has to do also with tomorrow's topic on blue ocean strategy and you will see and you, you will be able to use maybe this business model uh, design or framework also at uh, blue ocean strategy tomorrow. So basically the value side and the cost side of uh, the business strategy. This model is presented in uh, this book, I don't know if anyone knows it, business model generation. I would consider it a must read for every student and not just for those who would like to be the entrepreneurs but for everyone probably the, the percentage of uh, innovative businesses or business models would rise significantly if this would be uh, compulsory uh, reading at the university level. Okay. So once again the customers your value proposition, what do you give to the customers, customer relationship channels, how do you distribute, how do you communicate with them, what do you need to do, so key activities, key resources, among them also intellectual property, and key partners. Important in regard to intellectual property, how do you cooperate with your um, key partners? So costs and money, revenues on the right side. Okay. So, which competitive advantages are key to your market success? Any idea? What do you think that business needs <coughs> to be successful? A good team. A good team, okay. This is definitely a very important one. Idea. Okay. Yeah. But to get from idea to the right side. Finance resources. Okay. And other resources. Mm -hmm. as well. Strategy. Okay. And what would good strategy mean? Knowing your market, like where you're gonna sell. Mm hmm to whom you're going to sell. Yeah. Okay. Knowing your competition, essentially, like, is there a similar product out there? What's it being sold for? Okay. Good. But from here, you know the competition, you know there are similar products. What should you do to be different enough to have some competitive edge? In which way? Quicker than the way. Okay, quicker. So time to market. This would be one, yeah. You have 
to check if there's any, uh, like if it's already launching, like w what stage they're at, if they're ahead of you, then you know, you might be putting all this effort into it and then they're like a few days away from launching. Okay. So, yeah. But you might be different. Basically, talking about the competition, do you like competition? Would you like to have competition? Competition is good for project, for product mm -hmm. development. It, it increases. Like every company wants to make a better product, and if there's competition, they're gonna be even more. They're gonna have to have a better product. Okay, but would you like to have better product, or would you like to have a different product? Better. The product that does not exist. But there is a market for it. Well, that everyone can copy it. No, so I'd rather have a better product. Different, different. But if you are first, it's better to have a, mm -hmm. the market for yourself. I'm just asking. Okay, let's check. Here are basically some of the competitive advantages that that um, that company might have. And yes, basically there are two generic strategies, yes. Being uh, either uh, differentiating your business enough or your value proposition or be really cost effective, so be a cost leader. So basically the two generic, um, generic uh, strategies. Tomorrow you will, on the day to after tomorrow, you will learn how to think differently with the Blue Ocean strategy and to um, basically think out of the box regarding the business strategy. But here are some competitive advantages. We mentioned time to market. Uh, definitely innovative business model is a competitive advantage. But also within the product, some technical solutions regarding the product itself or the process to produce uh, or to manufacture your products. Uh, distribution channels. Uh, communication channels, um, point of sales, um, the design of the product. How many of you buy something just because of the outright design? Okay, guys, no? <laughs> Only you? <laughs> so it is important. So it can be your competitive advantage. Yeah? And the question later will be how to um, to protect these competitive advantages for as long as possible. And the intellectual property, or the system of the intellectual property rights, can help you with that. Okay. So these are basically the four stages of the development. So assessing the market needs, and then finding the right idea. With finding <coughs> the right idea, also the intellectual property system can help you. Development of idea through the innovation to market product and market life of the product itself. Okay, <coughs> so really shortly, some basic uh, uh, overview of, of uh, business models and business strategy, some competitive advantages. Next uh, step intellectual property. Basically, we will touch the industrial property, copyright, and soft IP in a really condensed way, and then some words in between about the IPR system itself. So the definition from the webpage of the World Intellectual Property Organization. Intellectual property refers to creations of the mind. Yeah? So you need the mind. A brain and you need some sparkle, some creative ideas, some wow effect. Yeah? Because it has to be new, it has to be different and has some something special in it. Intellectual property rights protect the interests of creators of intellectual property by giving them actually the property rights as for the house for example or their creation. So from here on, we can go through different um, property rights. First of all, as I said, industrial property, patents, 
industrial designs, trademarks, and some other less important or less often used. Uh, general characteristics, it is an exclusive right. What does it mean? It means that you can exclude others from using your, your uh, creation, which is protected by intellectual property right. There are some um, maximum term for each of the right, different for each of them. 20 years for the patent, up to 25 years for industrial designs, and 10 years for trademarks, but that can be and then renewed as many times as the mark itself is alive. Mm. For the industrial property, as well as other intellectual property rights, it, it's, uh, well, it is a ter territorial right. What does it mean? It only is valid within the territory within which it was um, uh, granted. For the industrial property, right, well, they has or they have to be applied for. That means you have to ask the state to give you this right, and there are certain conditions, of course, that you have to fulfill. You have to pay the registration fee and you have to pay the renewal fees annually or whatever the law of the country uh, wants you to do. Okay, first the patents. Uh, patents, uh, with patents you can uh, Protect technical solution uh, to a technical problem, so it's granted for an innovation. What is or the invention? Sorry, what is the invention? It has to be new. It has to be non-obvious. So the spark, uh huh, effect, and there should be some industrial applicability of it. Okay. It it's relatively long procedure to to for the granted to be granted. This is the one of the possible examples. There are usually different routes, or there are always different routes to obtain certain intellectual property right. And uh, later we'll see for some uh, for other property rights which they can be. Uh, what can be patented? Uh, well, a product itself. It can uh, a pa um, apparatus for producing the product, the process or method for producing the product, or the use of the product. There are certain things that cannot be patented and this is the list of them. You can check them maybe later. What patent rights do from the business point of view? Well, first of all they prevent others from using your invention without permission, which is important. It's kind of monopoly. So we said we don't like competition. This is the monopoly, the state grant to you, so it's good to use it if you can use it. Uh, it potentially prevents competitors from entering your market space. You can attract or retain investors or business partners. Uh, another important thing is to gain time during the development phase. Um, you can use it as a market tool to add some market credibility. Uh, it usually brings some kind of uh, price premium to your products and you can uh, add extra revenues, uh, cash flows through licensing or sale of IP rights. Okay, industrial design, the next, um, next uh, intellectual property or the in, uh, industry property right. Uh, outward appearance of a product or part of which of it, which results from lines, contours, uh, yeah, contours, color, shape. So something that make your product different on the outside. Here uh, you can see different options how to obtain the design. Same go, same goes more or less for all in the, um, industrial property rights. So there's a national system through the national office. Uh, in case of Slovenia, it's a Slovenia Intellectual Property Office. 
in case of Croatia, there is State Intellectual Property Office of Croatia. Um, you can go through the regional way. In our case, it would be um, registered community design that uh, is granted for all 27 member states of the European Union, which is a good way, cheap way to obtain protection for the whole 27 member states. And there is basically always also the international system, international way to obtain whatever right, industrial property right you would like to obtain. Okay, trademark is next. Uh, probably the, the kind of uh, industrial property right that we are most aware of. Here are some examples, I'm sure you all know. Um, with a trademark, you can, uh, or a trademark can be either a sign or a combination of signs. It can be just one letter or number or whatever signs, which distinguishes the goods or services of, un of one enterprise from those of another. This is important, this is the basic, basically, of a trademark. To, uh, to differentiate uh, most more or less the same products or the same type of products of different um, of different um, manufacturers. The trademark can be either registered or unregistered. There are different rights you have if you register your trademark or you do not register it. But even unregistered trademark. Uh, gives you some summaries. So it helps consumers to recognize and decide on goods and services. For you, standing in front of the shelf in the supermarket, it would be easy. It would be hard to decide which shampoo to take among many, many in the same. If all would be look the same from the outside, yeah. So using the slogan, using the name, using the logo, you can actually know who is the producer behind the product. As I mentioned already, term up to 10 years, renewable for 10, 10 years, full life of trademark. Trademarks can be either a word, like Adidas in this case, or a logo, for example this one, or a combination, uh, so a word associated with a logo. There are several other possibilities. Uh, if you're interested, it's really you can use the, the web to explore more. So why trademarks are important and uh, which filing option to consider uh, when um, thinking about uh, registering a trademark? So trademarks strengthen brand recognition, which is important to, uh, to differentiate yourself from others on the market. Trademark prevents others from copying, imitating, and so on. And you can, of course, generate revenue, either by increased profit margins because of <coughs> brand recognition, better brand recognition, or through the licensing uh, to others. What would you ask yourself when you would like to when uh, register a trademark? Where is your market today? Where will your market be in five to 10 years? And of course, the cost side, what is the cost of different options? How long does it take to register using different possibilities? And again, you have national way, you have the international, or as the case in of the um, registered design, the regional way, uh, the um, organization for harmonization internal markets, OHIM in Alicante for the European Union. Next group of rights is a copyright, or in many countries, author's right, and related rights. These are important, uh, are important as they do um, cover many, um, many works, many aspects of, of, of creativity. In this case, for example, the artistic creation, poems, novels, music, paintings, 
but also software and um, with the copyright it is important that the, uh, you get it automatic or they become automatic on creation and no registration is needed. In some countries registration is needed to be able to, to um, enforce your right in front of the court, like in the United States. So be careful, but it's definitely in all countries, copyright is automatic on creation. Okay. Uh, the last, uh, the last right, the so-called soft IP, uh, trade secret, uh, basically any piece of information which is sufficient secret uh, to derive economic value for um, for your company or yourself uh, can be uh, regarded as trade secret if. the holder actually do whatever is needed to keep it as a secret. Okay. There is no time limit, this is a good thing. You probably know the Coca-Cola case uh, on the recipe and there is no registration fee. But you really have to you know, put reasonable efforts into keeping, keeping it as a secret. Now putting these two topics together in competitive advantage and intellectual property. We have mentioned before different types of competitive advantages and here are the basic type of protection <coughs> that you can use to protect uh, your competitive advantages. So for technical solutions products, there are patents and or trade secrets. For technical solutions regarding the improved processes Usually within the manufacturing process, it's probably better to use a trade secret, but can also be patented. There are copyright and related rights in regard to software that you develop to improve your uh, processes. Um, so the design can be uh, protected by registered or unregistered design. And there's always a copyright for the person who actually designed the product there is a name, reputation that can be either protected by trademark. Uh -huh. This is something that stayed from the Slovenian version. So copyright and um, brand or um, uh, equity. Another group of competitive advantages, business model. Usually part of the business models can be kept as a trade secrets. Uh, time to market, as you already mentioned. The first to the market and continuous development. In continuous development, you can also use intellectual property system to speed up this development process. Um, <coughs> process. Domain names, another important topic in today's world. And uh, some other here. Yeah. But all of this should also um, come to the price competitiveness, but you cannot protect it by any kind of intellectual property right. So why to, to protect? When developing a new idea, uh, it is good to know what is your exit strategy with this idea. So how will you actually get to the money, either by manufacturing and selling. <coughs> you can do this locally, regionally, or globally. <coughs> you can license, you can franchise. Again, doing it regionally, globally, or locally. You can sell the company that has the intellectual property or sell the intellectual property itself. So there are different ways to, to get to that final stage, so to the money. Uh, but to do this, or to be able to do this, you have to protect your intellectual property. Without protecting it, it's hard to sell it, it's hard to license it or franchise it. Uh, but manufacturing, <coughs> yeah, you can do it without 
probably without uh, protecting it. Selling, for selling can be successful, but you have to be well known, so at least trademark would be a good thing to have. The further you go, what well, more time you need, more resources you need, higher risks there are, but of course the value rises. So sale of IP, uh, licensing, manufacturing on this side, and then at the end manufacturing and selling, but uh, of course takes time, resources, and the risk is significantly higher. I think that uh, Jerk's case is a good example of, of of this process, as seen before, well, he had a hot fit in Nevada, got an idea, came home to Italy, developed the idea into a viable product, patented it, and tried to sell it to food to our manufacturers without any success. But after testing phase, he actually began itself in himself large scale production through the GX brand name. He worked on the development, improved the original invention, and now he or the company has over fifty patents, more than thirty different trademarks, and well the whole uh, process the the uh, the company was established in 1995. By the end of 2011, he got 2,900 employees, more than 1,100 retail stores, either franchised or under their um, operations, um, with a sales, the annual sales of 2011 of almost 900 million and a profit of 50 million. So basically, well, never give up and have different options open, different exit strategies open until one of it came through. So how to use the whole system of intellectual property uh, rights to help you with, with the business success? Uh, I usually... Uh, cut it, or the IP value chain, to four, four areas. Research development, once the, uh, the product or services develop protection of intellectual property, the economic use and enforcement. We cannot mention much the enforcement side, but well, it is important in the end. Without enforcing your rights, they are not worth anything. So what would be activities and the goals for these activities regarding the, um, the business? operations. Uh, in the R&D area, you could use intellectual property system to look for the prior art, so what is already out there, for the technology mapping, patent landscape, and the freedom to operate. So Irina will tell you more about that later and how to do it. What is important is that these activities can get you to more innovative or more creative products can significantly shorten your development times or development cycles. They lower your uh, cost on research and development. And through this, you can also identify your potential partners, which uh, can be key at your, uh, to your business model and business success. Regard, in regard to protection, um, what you would do to, uh, need to do, you would need to know your IP. So, um, Identify your IP, you have to value it. You can use trade secrets as long as possible, but then at some point you have to protect it through um, uh, different, uh, to get different uh, IP protection, so with different IP rights. And of course, some of the IP rights are there by itself uh, through the copyright. What do you get? You get protection of competitive advantages and your market position. Uh, you protect your freedom to operate. Freedom to operate means that basically you do not 
Um, <coughs> you do not. Uh, hmm? No one can stop you. Basically, yeah. To uh, you you phone. you do not use uh, intellectual property of others, so you have the okay. freedom to operate. And there is lower operations risks by this, and uh, you can always block your competitors by having your intellectual property protected. What does it mean from uh, the economic side? There is higher market share usually, higher prices that you can uh, get on the market with lower costs and additional cash inflows. But then, of course, uh, these are the activities that will help you achieve this. Enforcement, you would like to block competitors to remain uh, a monopoly on the market and uh, you can through this usually you can for negotiation receive additional cash inflows uh, from your competitors so there is a way to come from idea to, to your <coughs> destination what you need usually is the innovative product or service you can use the system of IPR to help you develop this kind of innovative product you need uh, value innovation. You will hear more about this tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. You need innovative business model. Business model generation book is a good source to understand this. And holistic approach to IP is recommended. Who can help you getting most out of the IP system? Well, these are some of the sources for general information, national IP offices. Most of them do have some kind of consulting and training activities. Um, international organizations, so WIPO, uh, European Patent Office, and uh, uh, um, Office for Harmonization on, uh, on Internal Markets. Support Environment, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, other networks uh, in Slovenia, Enterprise Europe Network is very uh, active. There are websites of Fino Access and IP for Reno. And for specific issues, problems, IP consultants and patent and trademark attorneys. Any questions? Thank you.